There was this young man who stepped across a little spit of land separating Turkey from Greece, thereby moving from Asia into Europe. He came to Athens and he started to preach the gospel. No one really noticed. No historian would have seen this as a significant event. He just wanted to be faithful to the Lord. Almost everyone ignored him or laughed at him and thought that he was crazy. But a few individuals asked to hear more. In the sixth century, another young man, disgusted by the moral laxities and worldliness of Rome, withdrew from civilization and became a hermit in a cave in the mountains of Italy. Again, no one would have thought this to be significant. He just wanted to be faithful to the Lord. Almost everyone who passed by the cave kept walking. But a few individuals wanted to know what he was doing. In the 13th century, a young man heard the voice of Christ calling him to build up the church. The young man was moderately wealthy, but he gave everything to the poor, and he devoted his life to prayer and preaching in the streets. If you had seen him, you wouldn't have thought anything special about him. But again, he just wanted to be faithful to the Lord. And almost everyone who heard him just kept on going about their business. But there were a few, a few individuals who joined him. In the 20th century, another young Catholic, a young nun, also heard the voice of Christ telling her that he was thirsty. Understanding this as a call to tend to Christ in the poor who were thirsty, hungry, or sick, she went to the poorest section of the poorest city and simply just started taking care of the sick. That action would have never made news, but she just wanted to be faithful. Almost everyone who walked by ignored her. In fact, many people were revolted by what she was doing. But there was a few individuals who came and started to help her. Today we hear Jesus preaching about the kingdom of God using this strange image of a mustard seed. As he describes it, it is the smallest of all the seeds. Major parts of his preaching, as recorded in the Gospels, are devoted to proclaiming the kingdom of God. So this Sunday, we're asking ourselves, what does he mean when he says the kingdom of God? What did Jesus mean? That the kingdom of God is at hand. What are we saying when we pray, thy kingdom come in the Lord's prayer? The kingdom of God is not a place that you can point to or that you can see or that you can say, there it is. Certainly the kingdom of God is in heaven. We understand this. But Jesus also said that it's here right now among us. So what is it? I want to define for you the kingdom of God and I want you to listen closely. Let's say that the kingdom of God is something that comes about within a person, within a community, when God's holy laws are obeyed and faith, trust, and love, and when sin is actively shunned and avoided, but also when God's will is actively sought and fulfilled where God is exalted above all and placed at the very center, where the self is forgotten, where love of God and love of neighbor reign supreme. In other words, the kingdom of God is where God reigns, where God is king. 
That's the kingdom of God. While we're at it, we need to contrast what the kingdom of the world is. This is a kingdom that behaves as if God doesn't matter. Where God is, is not known and doesn't want to be known. Selfish pursuits, human passions, and appetites are the ones that govern all behaviors. This world promises no hope beyond itself. And therefore, it commands us, eat, drink, be merry today, for tomorrow we die. So you better take it all now. That's the kingdom of the world. And it's marked by the exaltation of the self. It's all about me. Here, now, I am king. I decide. I know what's best. Quite a difference. So into the kingdom of the world comes Jesus Christ. And he comes to proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand. We needed Christ to come and show us the way. He founded the church, the great task of the church. That's us, all of us, to transform the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of God. It's a huge task. Where do we start? How do we do this? Well, the answer is in very small ways. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, Jesus said. That small little seed. The kingdom of God starts with every individual being faithful. That's it. Just be faithful. See to it that the kingdom of God reigns in your heart. That you're obeying God's holy laws with faith, trust, and love. And that you're actively shunning and avoiding sin. That you are instead actively seeking out the will of God and fulfilling it. That you're exalting God and placing Him, placing him at the very center of your life. That you forget yourself. And allow the love of God and love of neighbor to reign supreme. And that you come to an understanding that God is the king of your life. And then the kingdom of God appears. That's what it is. I promise you that you can't live that way and not have people notice. Maybe most will ignore you or laugh at you or think you're crazy. Oh, that's just another one of those holy rollers. But I guarantee you, people will begin to notice if you're being faithful. And some will want to join you. And some will want to know what you're doing. And some will say to you, I want what you have. What truth have you come to know? And then the kingdom of God begins to grow. And slowly we transform the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of God. It starts with each and every single one of us just being faithful. That's how it's always been. That's how it's been from the very beginning. When St. Paul stepped from Turkey into Greece and started preaching the gospel, he certainly had no idea that those few people who were listening to him would become the bedrock foundation on which all of the evangelization of Europe would be built upon. He was just trying to be faithful. When St. Benedict left that cave, which you can still see today, and founded the first monastery, he certainly had no idea that the Benedictine monasteries would spring up all over the world and that his rule of life would be used by all future religious communities and that he would preserve and save Christendom and all of Western civilization through the Dark Ages up until today. He didn't know that was going to happen. He just wanted to be faithful. 
When St. Francis of Assisi sold everything he had started preaching in the streets, he had no idea that 800 years later there would be Franciscan friars, churches, hospitals, universities, missions all over the world. He just wanted to be faithful. When Mother Teresa started caring for the sick in the streets of Calcutta, she had no idea that so many sisters would join her and that they would set up soup kitchens and shelters for houses for the sick and for women all over major cities across this globe. She was just trying to be faithful. All of these people were mustard seeds single individuals that loved the Lord and strove to be faithful through their faithfulness, they began to build up the kingdom of God. In fact, it was Mother Teresa who got at the heart of what we're talking about today. Once when she was asked if she thought she would be successful in a certain project that she was working on, she famously replied, God didn't call me to be successful. God called me to be faithful. She understood it perfectly. I guess that's why she's a saint. So my brothers and sisters, on this 11th Sunday of ordinary time, our task as the church is to transform the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of God. I hope every one of you realizes that and also realizes that it, we need your participation in this. The job is enormous. Trust me. But we know how to begin now. Just be a mustard seed. Just be faithful. If you're faithful, then God will take care of the rest. Amen.